Hello, my name is Pierre Bury. I'm the CEO of uh, Include OS, and uh, this is our presentation of uh, what unikernels are. So, um, we should start off by a sort of short history of computing. Um, basically, we're, why we are where we are today. So, on the picture here, you see as uh, PDP 11. Uh, these are Ken uh, Thompson and uh, Dennis Ritchie uh, working on Unix back in 1972. Uh, th this was the computer where Unix was born. And, and these were very expensive machines. They were like $5 million a piece. Uh, and so naturally, if you wanted one, you, you couldn't really have one by yourself and you had to, to share it with others. And that became sort of the first attempt at sort of virtualization. Uh, of, of an interactive system. So you have this computer, you log into it, you get your own terminal, you get your own processes, and the operating system sort of separates my data from your data. Um, and this had sort of implications on how the operating system was designed. Uh, so you see this, this drawing here, you see the operating system kernel is the one in the middle. It runs in sort of the priv a, a privileged mode. Uh, where it sort of is allowed to talk to hardware and sort of police the, the processes and the users. Uh, and outside you have uh, the unprivileged mode and that's where the applications run. And because the, uh, the operating system kernel needs to sort of police the, the processes, it needs to run in a sort of higher privileged level. But applications need to talk to the kernel as well. Uh, and they talk to the kernel through this sort of layer of security, which is sort of sort of a, a barrier uh, and and if you if you're doing sort of any sort of low-level programming the most expensive thing you can do is actually to sort of talk to the kernel so and every time you sort of allocate memory or you send a packet on the network or you do something like that you sort of need to do a context switch and there's a lots of lots of stuff happens that sort of makes everything slow down to a crawl so that's quite interesting uh, because today the computers we have they're no longer multi-user uh, systems uh, so a lot of the sort of design aspect of, of, of a modern operating system that aren't really used today because co the computers in the cloud they typically just run one single application so every time you have a new application and you want to sort of deploy it you're not trying to fit that application onto your existing servers. You just deploy new servers and then uh, those bec basically become single purpose. And this is sort of where there's a currently is a mismatch between the operating system design we have and the way we're using uh, the, uh, the computers in the cloud. So this is where unikernels come. So, so what is the unikernel? Uh, basically the idea is you have your application and you have your operating system and in the unikernel you just merge them into one so you merge them into one single image that contains both your application and the operating system functionality that it needs so if you compare them side by side you see sort of on the left here you see your application is running whenever you sort of load it it will load various libraries those libraries are sort of are present in the operating system mm, and they, they they provide the application with, with various functions. Uh, it also runs on top of the kernel, which so that it provides services to the libraries and to the application, provides an IP stack, some drivers, uh, manages the hardware, provides scheduling, memory management, all that stuff. Uh, in the unikernel, what we do is when the unikernel is built, it, or when you're Unicorn application is built, it takes your application and it sort of it looks at what, what libraries do you need, what operating system functionality do you need, and that is all put into the same image. So it's actually sort of the linker is actually what sort of does all the magic. Um, what the, the unicorn system provides is functionality that's you're able to sort of link into the application. So this gives uh, us a bunch of sort of characteristics. So basically the, the reason why we're doing this. Uh, one of the sort of key features is security. So unikernels are by nature very secure. One of the key reasons is they, they contain a lot less code. So 
a deployed unikernel typically only has the functionality which is needed by the application. So typically there's no Bluetooth support, there's no USB stack, there's no floppy drive, there, there's none of that. And, and that of course, and there's, there's no file sharing, there, there is no, yeah. Just 99% of, of the code that's in a typical general purpose operating system just isn't there because it's not really needed. Because general purpose operating system, they, they need to tend, uh, uh, tend to everyone's needs. Uh, whereas the unikernel only gets built for that specific application. So that's that's one of the uh, one of the reasons. Uh, so so imagine you're you're an attacker and you're attacking a uni unikernel. Uh, you, the unicorn might also doesn't have the functionality to to modify itself. Now, general purpose operating system are built are built for really expensive computers, and of course they need to modify themselves. Uh, you can't really just when you have this this five million dollar computer, you can't really throw it away every time you need to reconfigure it. But with virtual servers, you can actually do that today. You can sort of throw them away. Uh, when I, and then just deploy a new one. Uh, as long as you sort of, that whole idea is called immutable uh, infrastructure. Um, and it's a sort of, it's a, it's a very natural uh, way to think about sort of to deploy unicorns. Yeah. So, that, that, so this all gives us a sort of, I, I would say a substantially level, of, a higher level of security than, than a general purpose operating system. The next advantage we have is is, is speed. Uh, Unicorns are really really fast. Uh, a lot of that comes from basically stems from two things. Uh, one is there are no system calls, no context switches. Whenever we invoke something that needs that would typically in, involve the operating system, we just basically just switch to another part of the of the program without having to flush caches uh, and page tables and sort of. There's no no changes needed. Uh, as as we uh, as we invoke the operating system, uh, so th that gives us a lot of, of performance boost. You can tell. So the, a good example is is the Scylla uh, Scylla DB pro uh, project, which uh, basically they taken Cassandra and they sort of built it in a unicorn way, uh, and the performance gains they can show is is quite tremendous. Another one is manageability. Um, a lot of the sort of operating system updates that that are get deployed today, they're not really needed by the application. Uh, so, uh, why do we actually do them? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, because so so let's say that there's something wrong with 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 the the Bluetooth stack on on Red Hat Enterprise Server. Uh, Red Hat pushes out a kernel update. Uh, most sysadmins will not actually. Uh, skip an update. They will apply every update. So every time there's a bug in the Bluetooth stack, 100 million servers needs to be rebooted. Um, since there's so li so little code in 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 uh, in a unicorn system, the, the chances that you need to do an up update is actually quite mi minimal. So you only need to do most of the time you'll only need to do updates when there's a change in your application or in its, con or in its configuration. Efficiency, so unikernels are very, very, very efficient. Uh, there, there's basically no overhead at all. Uh, uh, the, the images themselves are typically very small. Uh, I think like the smallest image we have is like 64K uh, that doesn't include the networking stack, so that's not really useful. But like with the networking stack, I think we can get it down to 700k, uh, which is like ridiculously small. We don't need that. Uh, so, but yeah. typically, include OS Unicode instances are between one and two megabytes big. Uh, that includes a, fa a fair bit of application as well. But but that doesn't really it's it's so small that it doesn't really matter. It might be sixteen megabyte and nobody would care. Uh, same thing with memory footprint, uh, uh, like four megabytes of memory and and we can boot and, and run comfortably. Uh, if if we need to do like a high performance TCP, we might need some more space for some more buffers. Uh, but like sixteen megabytes of memory and you should be that should be more than enough. Uh, for a, a simple web API. 
So next characteristic is is unicorns are like vastly different. They're completely different. They're not like a traditional Unix system. And of course, this is basically the 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 thing that sort of pushes against unicorn adoptions is that they're built on a completely different uh, pattern than, than, than all the other operating systems out there. And it's built on a pattern that isn't even taught in most schools uh, or universities. So like, so what, what, do, what the unicorn uh, uh, community needs to overcome is, is that to, to sort of get people to adopt this, this rather strange way of, of dealing with applications. So the unicorn landscape today, it's there. There are, I think, like 10, 12 different unicorns out there. Uh, the three that sort of I pay attention on, uh, I would sort of consider the ones that are in really active development. Is one is Include OS, of course. That's where I work. Uh, so we sort of a performance-oriented uh, unicorn, written in C plus plus. It's event-based. I think like all the unicorns are typically event-based. Um, so we're currently sort of focused on a lot of sort of networking infrastructure, sort of software defined networking functionality. Uh, so that, that's currently our focus, but long-term focus is, is to be able to also provide uh, other runtimes for other languages as well. So one of the nice things in building stuff in C or C++ is that you can sort of very easily integrate other runtimes in, into your unikernel. So Golang or node or something is is actually achievable for us to 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 support natively uh the 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 oldest uh or the most i would say maybe the most mature one on uh, is mirage uh, so mirage is they're the guys who sort of actually coined the the term unikernels uh so and it, there's ton of sort of research uh, done on on mirage uh, it's really it works really great. It's it's very stable. It's very sort of robust. Uh, the only sort of hindrance is it's written in OCaml. So unless you sort of willing to sort of learn OCaml, you, you might not want to use it. So, but but otherwise that it's great. Uh, there's also HalVM from Galois, uh, which is kind of I, th I would say a well well suited uh, unicorn for for sort of security oriented. Uh, uh, applications so if you want to sort of formally verify the security of your application you might want to do it in Haskell and then HalVM is sort of uh, your natural uh, unikernel to use there's some generic tooling as well uh, there's a project called unique uh, which was initiated by Dell EMC uh, which is sort of provides a general sort of generic framework for managing different kinds of unikernels so you might want to have a look at uh, as at them as well if you're planning to play with different unicorns. So to sum up, unicorns they're fast, they're secure, they're very very efficient, they're vastly different, and I would say they're really fun to work with. Uh, it's it's really some <laughs> it is really quite something to sort of uh, write your application and then sort of boot it. Uh, directly on a VM uh, that's that's quite uh, yeah, it's it's challenging and fun so who are we uh, so we're include us you can follow us on Twitter my name is Perbu I'm Perbu at uh, Twitter so uh, thank you for uh, listening to us uh, if you have any questions uh, feel free to ans uh, ask them in the comment section below and I'll be sure to sort of uh, keep an eye on it. If there's anything else you want to want us to sort of uh, do these videos on, uh, we'll be very happy to, to, to take your uh, suggestions. We'll see if we can make a few few one, few other ones.